Hey guys, welcome to another video. Finally, we hit the preseason and the new rune system is in place. Seems quite confusing at first, doesn't it? Well, I'll get you through it as quick as possible. A few things you need to know. First, runes and masteries have been reforged into one new system, which lets you play the same champion according to your preferred style, and change this in champion select. I call BS on this though. Obviously, everyone will play every single champion with the same rune page the pros will use. Second, runes are free, but rune pages aren't. If you've got a few rune pages, then they'll be transitioned into the new system untouched. You start out with two rune pages that you can customize to your desire, and will have to buy more if you want more. The thing is, being that you can change the pages in champion select, I'm not sure whether it's worth investing your blue essence in it. Just one modifiable rune page is enough if you don't mind changing it every single game, where you pick a different champion. Third, even though the system is new, you'll find a lot of similarities in some cases, like Thunderlords being named Electrocute. But moving on, let me take you through all the different choices in each bracket and explain what they do so that you can start picking the right stuff for your champions. The way this works is you'll get to pick two paths where you get a keystone and three choices from the main one and two secondary choices from the second path. First, the precision bracket, or the marksman and possibly bruiser bracket. For keystone, you get three really interesting picks. Press the attack makes an enemy champion vulnerable for 6 seconds after you hit them with 3 consecutive auto attacks. I can imagine Vayne using this pretty well. While vulnerable, they'll take 12% more damage from all other sources. Lethal Tempo will work well with champions that synergize well with attack speed. Kog'Maw is another good example here, and I can imagine him melting every target with this. It basically grants the user 30 to 80 attack speed based on level and allows the champion to go over the attack speed cap. Attacking after this is triggered will extend its duration to 6 seconds. But it has a 10 second cooldown. Seems pretty OP to be honest. Finally, Fleet Footwork is the old Warlord's Bloodlust, where he gains stacks by moving and attacking to create an energized attack which will heal the user and grant him extra movement speed. For the secondary choices in this precision tree, you've got Overheal, which will grant the user a shield when he gets overhealed. Works great with a lane with Soraka, Tarek, or maybe even Alistar. Triumph, granting you 15% of health back on takedowns and additional gold, and Presence of Mind, allowing you to use abilities for no mana cost 5 seconds after you level up or take down an enemy. I've gotta tell you that Lots of people are going to be using the same keystones for most champions, but these little choices here should really vary depending on who you're playing with and against. It really depends on what kind of lane you're playing. Poke lane? Consider Presence of Mind with Varus for free poke each time you level up. Sustain lane? Take over heal if your support has the ability to give you health back. Kill lane? Triumph will net you so many advantages from forcing fights and getting kills in lane. But moving on, the next group in the precision tree is called Legend meaning you will gain legend stacks for every minion, monster and champion you kill and those will be used differently based on what you pick here. If you pick Alacrity, they'll give you extra attack speed. If you pick Tenacity, they'll make you harder to kill. And if you pick Bloodline, you'll get lifesteal. Finally, the last three choices are Coupe de Grasse, which provides you with extra damage to low health champions, Cut Down, which makes you hit tanks harder, again great synergy with Vayne here, and finally Last Stand, which makes you hit harder when you are low health yourself. That's it for the Precision Tree, again if you pick it as a secondary role, you won't get to pick one of the keystones, but you can choose two out of the last nine, being that you are limited for one from each sub bracket, so you can't pick like two legend runes for example. The Domination Tree's keystones are Electrocute, a renewed version of Thunderlords, Predator, which enchants your boots, apparently with the active effect Predator, meaning that you can channel for 1.5 seconds out of combat to gain 45% movement speed for 15 seconds. Dealing damage ends this effect. Dark Harvest will also make you hit a lot harder after getting a bunch of soul charges gained from killing champions, large monsters and large minions. You might be thinking it's a jungle rune, but the thing is, jungle monsters only drop 2 soul charges, whereas cannon minions drop 5, and champions drop 8, meaning it could easily be useful in the lane too. For the first tree branch, you have the choice of getting Cheap Shot, allowing you to deal extra, true damage to CC champions. These are great on champions that rely on CC, and it only has a 4 second cooldown, meaning you'll be dealing true damage a lot of the time. Taste of Blood heals you when you damage an enemy champion, but it has a 20 second cooldown. This is great for sustain in lane, and Sudden Impact will grant you extra lethality and magic pen after using a dash, a flash, a blink, etc. Katarina is going to use this and get back into meta, I can promise you that. Zombie Ward will place a ward after you take down one and doesn't affect your ward limit. It also creates a zombie ward after your wards expire. They're visible though. Ghost Poro allows you to summon a Poro after you went to a bush and gives you vision of that bush. Enemies entering the bush scare it away though. Eyeball Collection will make you deal extra damage after you collect 20 eyeballs and you get these by taking down enemy champions and enemy wards. The last domination branch has Ravenous Hunter, healing you for damage dealt by your abilities. It also gets increased healing per each individual enemy you take down. 
Ingenious Hunter grants you extra item active CDR, great for champions that rely on Zonius for survivability, for example. It also gets increased CDR per Bounty Hunter stack. And finally, Relentless Hunter grants its user movement speed plus extra per Bounty Hunter stack. This last one works pretty well with champions that will roam a lot in the mid game. Fizz and Zed come to mind. Moving on to the sorcery page, for Keystone, you get to pick from Summon Airy, which will damage enemies when you use abilities on them, and Shield Allies when you use abilities on them. Arcane Comet hurls a comet at enemies after you damage them with an ability. This kind of works like a Zerath ult, so you can dodge it unless you get CC'd. It could work pretty well with any. Phase Rush is a sort of variation to Thunderlords, which grants you movement speed after hitting three consecutive attacks or abilities. The first secondary branch of the Sorcery Tree is Nullifying Orb, which grants its user a shield when they would take magic damage that would bring them below 30% HP. Mana Flow Band, which has a 1 minute cooldown, but will make your next ability cost 0 mana and refund 8% of missing mana. And the Ultimate Hat, which grants your ultimate ability extra cooldown reduction and further reduces it each time you use it. For the second slot, you've got Transcendence, which grants the user 10% CDR when you reach level 10. But if you've already got over 10% CDR, then it gets added as extra AD or AP. Celerity grants you movement speed and also extra AP or AD, based off of your bonus movement speed. Basically, it's an applicable Janna passive. Absolute Focus grants AD or AP when you're above 70% health. And this one could be tricky to use, because you'll basically be forcing yourself to keep healed at all times. Otherwise, you get a massive power debuff. For the third and final slot of the sorcery bracket, you can pick between Scorch, which makes your first ability burn enemies, Water Walking, which grants movement speed and AP or AD in the river, and finally, Gathering Storm, making your AD or AP scale with the course of the game. Let's move on to the resolve tree. Here, for keystones, you have the chance to pick one of these. First, a familiar name, Grasp of the Undying. It heals you after 4 seconds when you use an auto attack in battle, and it also permanently increases your HP. Aftershock is the reformulated version of Courage of the Colossus, but this time, instead of giving you a shield, it increases your armor and magic resistance after immobilizing an enemy champion. It also explodes after 2.5 seconds, dealing AoE damage in a small radius around you. Guardian makes you take damage for an ally within 175 units of you, or whenever you use a spell on them. And if either you or them take damage, you both get a shield and a small boost in movement speed. The first row of secondary runes you can pick are Unflinching, which gives you tenacity and slow resistance after using a summoner spell, Demolish, which makes you a human rift herald, making you deal extra damage to towers, and Font of Life, which makes you mark enemy champions that you CC. When allies hit those marked champions, they'll heal over 2 seconds. This will be so amazing with Sejuani. Iron Skin is the first rune of the second row of secondary choices, and it gives you armor as well as increases your armor each time you get healed or shielded. Mirror Shell is basically the same but gives you magic resistance instead of armor, and Conditioning will make you gain armor and magic resistance after the 10th minute mark. For the last three, Overgrowth will permanently make you gain health for every 8 monsters or minions that die near you, Revitalize makes heals and shields stronger and especially on allies below 40% health, and finally Second Wind makes you heal for a small percentage of your missing health after an enemy damages you. Pretty nice versus Pokemons, to be honest. In the last tree branch of this new system, we've got one called Inspiration. And for Keystones, you've got one who people have been deeming to be OP, where I believe it will be seldom used. Unsealed Spellbook gives you a Summoner Shard at 2 minutes and one every 6 minutes, from then on maxing at 2 shards at each given moment. You can then exchange them at your base for a chance to replace your summoner spell with a different one. Additionally, it also reduces summoner spell cooldowns by 30%. Glacial Augment makes your basic attack slow targets, and slowing a champion with an item active also shoots a freeze between them that slows nearby units. Kleptomancy is the final keystone we'll talk about, and it grants you extra gold and possibly a consumable when you auto attack after using an ability. In the first lower branch of the inspiration tree line, we've got a choice of a very hard name to pronounce Hextech Flash Traption, which transforms your flash when it's on cooldown to a new spell, which makes you channel for 2 seconds before blinking to a new location, and it has a 20 second cooldown. Biscuit Delivery gives you a biscuit every 3 minutes in the first 12 minutes of the game. These replenish your health and mana and also permanently increase your mana cap by 40. Champions without mana get a health restoration boost instead. Perfect Timing gives you a free one-time Zonia's use after the 6th minute of the game and it could be very interesting in a matchup versus champions like Zed. 
The second branch makes you choose between magical footwear, which grants you a pair of free boots at 10 minutes, but prevents you from buying boots until then. If you manage to kill champions before that mark, then you get the boots 30 seconds sooner for each takedown. Futures Market allows you to go into debt while buying items. The amount you can borrow increases over time, and it starts at 150, increasing by that amount every 5 minutes. Minion Dematerializer gives you 6 stacks at the beginning of the game, which you can use to instantly absorb lane minions. It is on cooldown for the first 155 seconds of the game, but after absorbing a minion, it will increase your damage by 4% against that minion type permanently. It's a very interesting rune to have on champions that lack a pushing kit and are playing versus one. Perhaps you're playing versus an Anivia that has you pushed at the tower constantly and you want to have a chance of pushing the wave back. The last three are Cosmic Insight, granting you 5% CDR, Max CDR, Spell CDR and Item CDR. Approach Velocity grants you movement speed towards impaired units, be it allies or enemies. And Celestial Body grants a champion 100 health permanently, but also reduces your damage to champions and monsters by 10% for the first 10 minutes of the game. Now that you've seen all the runes in action, now comes the tricky part, putting these into practice. As I've said before, I believe this new rune system will force players to actually alter their paths depending on the game they're playing and not blindly follow a rune path they've seen on mobile fire or pro builds. I'll just give you an example of how to build this and then if you still have doubts on how to build a proper champion, drop a comment and I'll leave a few hints on what runes work best on them. Let's look at how I build my main, Janna. The first thing we've got to look at is a build path and a keystone. The ones I find most valuable on Janna are Summon Eri from the Sorcery Bracket or perhaps Kleptomancy from the Inspiration Bracket. But the latter seems like much more of a selfish kind of keystone to take on support champions. So let's go with the Summon Eri one. Getting a shield when I'm getting below 30% is useless on Janna. Having my mana refunded is nice, but I don't have that much mana issues with her. So I'll go for the ultimate hat, being that I use my ultimate a lot and having its cooldown reduced is very good. Transcendence is unnecessary because I'll most likely already have 10% CDR by the 10th minute mark and I don't need the extra AD or AP. Celerity synchronizes well with the passive and I really don't need damage. And again for the last choice we've got two that focus on dealing damage and one that grants me roaming potential. Not a tough call. For the secondary runes I can ignore the keystones from each branch and just go for the ones with the best runes for Jenna. Precision is for damage, Domination is for burst damage, Resolve for tankiness and CC and Inspiration for rule bending and creativity as they put it. Now we've got two to pick. Unflinching seems very selfish again, Demolish is a lot more focused for tanks and Font of Life could work a lot better with champions building health. Iron Skin is very viable and useful for the bot lane, but I could also change this to Mirror Shell if the enemy team is relying a lot more on magic damage. If they're a late game team comp, then conditioning becomes pretty interesting too. For now, I'll go with Iron Skin. Revitalize is the obvious choice in the last bracket, increasing your shielding power, and I'll go with that over healing yourself anytime. I hope this video helped you out, let me know if you have any doubts on how to build what champion in the comments and I'll leave my honest opinion. I respond to every single comment as I'm sure you know, so be sure to do so. Saki us out and good luck for the season.